Now, uh, let's bridge this to the achievement gap. You notice the achievement gap doesn't talk about much anymore? Remember what, when they started this movement, it was all about the gap. Now they don't mention the gap anymore. There's a reason for that. Now, there's some logic here. Now, we all know the achievement gap. You got whites and Asian students here. You got black and Latino students here. Right? Now, increasingly, black and Latino students are being funneled or encouraged or promoted to go into the charter system. Right? We know who's in charter. Now, if the charter system was better, producing more learning, then the gap would shrink. If the charter system was just as good as the public system, the gap would remain the same. If the charter system was producing far less academic growth in these students, then the gap would increase. Right, we have to test our theories out, right? We have to ask questions like this. We have to be scientific. Now, what do we think happened to that gap in Chicago? Where charters proliferated. This is 2011. CPS fails to close performance gaps. Black students still losing academic ground despite reforms. Studied by the University of Chicago. Two years later, 2013, Test score gap widens between white and black students in Chicago. Two years later, 2015, racial gap widens again, as some elementary math reading scores improve. The gap keeps getting wider. How is it possible for most, for a huge majority, or huge proportion of your black and brown students to be going into a system that's supposed to be better and the gap gets wider? When you take that and combine it with the growth data, it affirms that narrative. Something is wrong here. And any sensible public servant would say, stop! We have, to, we have to check this out. We have to take another look at what we're doing. Now, that's just Chicago. Let's look, at, let's look around the country, though. Maybe Chicago is different. Maybe the charter model there isn't quite the same. Well, it actually it is. But, you know, we have to be scientific. You know, we have to do our due diligence. And so what state was ground zero for charters? Anybody remember? It was a northern state just above Illinois. I remember Milwaukee, charters and vouchers. That's where it all got started. Now it's rampant. And so once again, you have a, we don't have to ask the question, we don't have to wonder anymore, the data is there, right? If those students were going to better options, that gap would decrease. Now, what do you think happened? Actually, let me rephrase it. What state in the United States now has the largest achievement gap in the nation? Wisconsin's achievement gap, academic achievement gap, remains nation's widest. Here's another look at it. These are the gaps of like the top dozen or so, the worst dozen or so in terms of achievement gap. You got Wisconsin, Massachusetts, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Ohio, everywhere. In these places that charters are proliferating, the achievement of black and brown children It's getting worse and worse in relationship to the achievement of white and Asian students. This one is about black and white. There's a site where you can go and actually play with these buttons up here and compare different groups. Uh, it's out of, out of a newspaper in Connecticut that pulled this together from uh, National Assessment of Educational Progress Data. So, oh, but you know, there's a city, there's also a city where charters are like half of the district. But that city doesn't belong to any state. D.C., that's right. So if D.C. were a state, guess what? Look at their gap. Look at that. Look at it. This is what we're doing to black and brown children with this model for schooling. The widest by far. 
and no one's talking about it. So, we have the fact that they are getting a poor quality education in China, on average. Now, that might be some good, I'm sure there are. But there might be some exceptions, but exceptions don't create good school systems. Critical mass creates good school systems. And this model does not come anywhere near to producing the critical mass of good schools needed to create a good system. Government has no business supporting a model for schooling where nine out of every ten of the new schools can't even beat the average of the schools in existence. <laughs> and again, this is not against charter educators. This ain't against parents who send your kids to charters. You need this information. Right? People out there trying to do their best, they're working with whatever information they have, they're trying to send their kids to where they believe they'll be safe, where they believe they'll get an education. I'm sure the teachers in those schools work just as hard. But there's something about that model that does not work. And we have to get to those things. That's important. Again, when I talk about poverty, we have to figure out what the levels are and talk about those levers. It's the same thing with charters. It can't be an anti-charter thing. We have to talk about what makes them, those things that make them toxic to our system, and get rid of those things. You get rid of those things, we won't have to worry about charters. The only people who want to engage in a charter are people who actually have good, who want our kids, who actually want to do the right thing by them. 